again, Linda here for those who don't know me already. I am doing a house tour today and the theme of today's tour is consignment pre-loved item. And don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to keep making more videos as our construction moves along and showing you some of the process, some of the rooms, some more DIYs. So I hope you enjoy. Bye now. This is a hutch in our kitchen and some of the consignment items here is this wine cooler. I believe I found it for $12. This rabbit plate in the back I actually picked up two days ago at Savers for $1.49. I absolutely love it. So I brought out some of my brown colored books to put on the hutch to match the rabbit. And I have some ironstone here. And I have white Limoges and I have some of the vintage glasses and the, oh, the, the, the plates were, I think, $8 for eight. I think I have six out here. And then the pink sherbet glasses were also a consignment find. I might have paid $18, $20 for a set of 10. So, oh, and back here I have a couple vases. They're hard to see. They're hidden in here. Those are props from a Martha Stewart studio or magazine shoot that I picked up and purchased. I have another Martha Stewart prop item that I'll show you afterwards. But this is my little pre-spring setup. We had a snowstorm, so I just wanted to get this, this all bright and cheery. This is something I think kind of fun that I want to show you. So I have the, the hurricane glasses off and these two oil lamps right now. I thought they were so cute and they had that little nautical feel. I had them over my fireplace at my other home, but I didn't want to use them as oil. So I was trying to figure out how I could use them for candles. So what I did, my little Yankee ingenuity, is I took some silver candle rings and I put them in there and I let them patina. Oh my gosh, look at all that dust. That has to go. Um, so I put the silver candle holders in there. Then I was able to put a little tea light inside the candle holder. So I'm gonna light both of them and I'm gonna show you what they look like. And it's just for a little ambiance and if we lose power, but let me put the camera down here for a minute and I will show you what they look like lit up with the globes on. Okay, here we are. I took care of the dust and uh, this is in the daylight so you can't see them as much, but I'm sorry, I'm a little proud of myself for thinking about doing how I did that. It was fun. Um, and I th it's kind of funny is, I did this a few years ago and recently I was looking for my two missing silver candle rings. And then when I went to light these for a party, I'm like, okay, there they are. So I do things sometimes quickly and randomly just to get by and then I forget that I did it. This is another lantern. Once again, I love collecting lanterns and I just put this up temporarily here because this kitchen also is gonna be going through a major remodel. So I just loved this. I put a little flicker candle in there. I have no idea, reproduction, old, whatnot, but I know I probably only paid 10 or $12 for that too. I don't like spending a lot on things. Um, I just, if I like it, I buy it. Let's see here. So coming in this room, I have these three candle sticks, um, maybe $12 at Savers. Another a bottle that I dug up this is a, a bowl, a wine chilling bowl that I got at Pier One, but it has come in very handy for a punch bowl in some of our parties, so I like doing that. This rack I just temporarily put up um, to hold some of the little items that I've picked up or have been given to us, so um, there's going to be a lot of silver cleaning going on. I just picked these up a while ago. Had to have these. It's not really something that I would always purchase, but it uh, helps me represent my Nova Scotia Scottish line, and this china is from Nova Scotia, and I love the blue thistle. And once again, same color as the little books that I showed in the um, bedroom upstairs. I'm not sure if this part of the video will be before or after that, but love this cobalt blue, indigo blue, and I'm gonna be doing a lot of that in one of my rooms. But I have a little baby cup here that was my husband's, I think great grandmother, could be grandmother, but uh, I'm not quite sure. Picked up this little aluminum cup with an L on it at a resale store. 
These are savers items for some silver and a, a baby's cup from my father-in-law and a few, few pewter cups I've used in some photo shoots you might have seen. And a little pewter candle holder that I did pick up also at Savers, maybe $5, $4.99. This is a pewter teapot from Williamsburg. It's part of the, a collection. I think I paid $29 for the set um, at a store in Essex, Mass. And back here is an old plate, just like the coloring. Once again, probably $10 and another pewter candlestick holder. I forget where I got that, but once again, I'm sure I only paid 10 or 12. And a few more bottles. I have a lot more bottles in my uh, laundry room downstairs that's going through a remodel soon too, but I'll show you that as a whole different, a whole different uh, video. Let me just scan over here real quick. Another pewter bowl that I found out and about. Um, I don't even know if maybe the price is still on it. No, I took that off. But probably $4.99, $5.99. And this little piece of furniture I had in my store as a prop. I just brought it here. Black Horse Tavern, I $12 at a store that is the same store that I bought the round federal mirror. And once again, out of business. I wish it was still around. And this print over here, I remember I got from Ethan Allen. I got a gift certificate in the mail when I moved to my one of my homes um, many years ago. And that's what I use the gifts to get on. And let's see my pantry, don't need to see that mess. And then over here, once again, I just added uh, these two sconces that I found. Um, hmm, I'm trying to remember the price on these. 15, 20 a pair maybe. And then this mirror had um, pastel colored flowers all around the edge. And I painted that out when I was doing my son's bedroom over one year. And right now I just put it here because I like when you sit at the table, you can see the outside. We have a beautiful backyard that has a western view. So at night you can watch the sunsets no matter which angle you're at. And then I have a little bowl here that I got. Um, maybe the price is still on this one. That one rings a bell. Yeah, $14.99 for this uh, Andrea by Sadak bowl. I just like the green of it with my faux apples. So I think that is it for now. Um, once again, this room, unfortunately, I love how tiny and cozy it is, but this is all gonna be opened up and made into part of our master kitchen, not master bedroom, but our large master kitchen. So there you have it. We are entering, oops, that was my finger there. Here we are entering the dining room that we're working on. Um, you just heard the chime here. This clock I found for $25. You can see some work going on back there. For $25 at a, a shop where my mother actually lives in a retirement community. And they kept marking it down. I'm like, I couldn't pass that up. And over our mantle here, these two candle sconces are covering light fixtures. I'm just looking for the right fixture right now, but I picked those up. I, oh gosh, I'm gonna say maybe $15 for the pair. I don't spend a lot of money when I know some things are gonna be temporary or I can use them again. This lantern I did pay $75 for. This was another one of the Mocker Stewart props. It don't know if it was used in our magazine or studio or on TV but I think that was kind of fun to have and it goes with our, our nautical theme here. A little silver bowl, needs some cleaning, but I picked that up. One of my favorite finds, just found this a couple weeks ago. This ship print, um, it's a reproduction, I found for $85 at a store in Acton, Mass. And I love the depth of the frame. The frame alone, I could never even do that for a client for this price at my cost. And one day I was looking at it and I didn't realize that there's people all over the boat. I thought that was kind of fun. I don't see any markings. I don't know what the boat is, unfortunately. So if anybody knows, you can tell me. And then I just have my little sign here. I love that saying. And on another video, you'll see how I painted out these bricks. They were all different colors 
and the mortar was different colors, some were painted, so this was a fun project that I did just to show you. And over here, when I had my retail store, which was a mix of consignment new items, these are two prints that they didn't sell, and so I, and the consigner didn't want them back, she was moving, and um, so I ended up purchasing them from her. I do think I paid 150 for the pair. Um, I don't know the background history about them, but she said they were limited edition, I'm not sure. Let's see here. Over here is a, another ship print. Let me see if I can get out of the shadow for you. I picked this up at the same store that I bought the other nautical print. Oh, it's not going to be seen here to see my phone. But I liked the coloring and it had some nice muted colors. I might be able to put another picture above in a second to show this at night. And uh, right now I'm just working on our master bedroom, bathroom project. We had an apartment in this house and right now we're converting it to our master bedroom suite. So I'm just looking at some tiles and whatnot for the shower and the walls and the flooring. So I'm having fun with that. So over here, I've um, got a few items that I recently picked up. Oh gosh, a crooked candle. That will have to be fixed. But I picked up these books the other day. It's a small grouping from the 40s. And I, I know I paid $20 for this. And the reason I picked it up was these four places are where a lot of my ancestors came from in the 16 and 1700s. And there's actually family names in them. So I do collect books with a lot of my family ancestors. And I'll show you that at one point. Uh, let's see here. These paperweights I know I've picked up at resale stores. This large cloche I had at my store um, for using for props. I picked that up on one of my wholesalers. And the nest just fell down one day when I was looking for a nest with my stepdaughter. I had to put it in there. This little plate, I just loved the coloring in it. Uh, let's see, yeah, the window shadowing. This I paid, I believe, $12 or $14 for that. And then under here, this is a chest, I know nothing about it. Um, my father-in-law found it at one point. It's in pretty bad condition. I just loved the, the style of it since we have a little nautical theme coming here. I lived near the water before we moved here to the country, so a lot of our items are nautical. But it's kind of a neat piece. It does have some old nails in there, but it could be a reproduction, no idea. If you know, let me know. This is just my little temporary vignette. And let's see, over here on this wall, we just had a piece of furniture go. And this tape is because I had to knock a hole through the wall to see what was under the stairs. Nice big opening. I think we're gonna remove part of these walls just to open up the space, but uh, that's yet to be seen. I have to find a piece of furniture to fill that in right now. And let's see, on this shelf here, this is what started it all for my passion for old homes. This house um, I grew up in, it's a late 1600s home added on in the 1700s. This is a photo from the 1800s, but I grew up here, my parents had it for 40 years, and this is when they started to remodel it in the 70s. So that is, like I said, a large part of my passion for old homes. I helped them remodel that my, you know, my whole life. And another ship print. This is uh, a page out of a book, I believe. And um, I had this in my store, but I held on to it for myself because I just loved the colors in it. If you follow me on Instagram or my blog, you've probably seen this. I've been showing this mirror for a couple years now. This was one of my, another great find, $50 at a consignment store. It's no longer in business. I believe it was in Pepperell, Mass. Loved the bevel edge and the deep rich color. It's, uh, the, I think it's Rococo. It's, it's probably from the 40s or 50s. And then here's the mantle that I brought from my childhood home. We tore it off the wall when we were doing, um, actually it, was, it wasn't a remodel. My mother and I saw that the wall seemed deeper than what we had for a room, so we actually knocked a hole in the wall and found a huge fireplace behind the fireplace that was originally there. 
and with cabinetry and everything. So I've been carrying this mantle with me for yeesh, about 30 years and it's finally found a home. I did use it in my stores and other homes just as a prop, but it's here now. So whenever we sell the home, it stays with it. Fit perfect too. I did not have to modify it at all, except for adding some uh, molding to the bottom. So this is a piece, once again, that came from my childhood home that I just showed you the photos of. It was in the blacksmith shop. That property had a blacksmith shop, a mill, chicken coops, root cellar. So it was a really great property to grow up in as a kid. And like I said, this was in there. The cobbler shop also had a blacksmith shop attached to it. And on the top here, shameless promotion. These are some of the issues of the magazine that I produce. Um, we do have some still here um, from past issues. I will put a link below if you are interested in learning more about how you can order some. I write all about New England, but we focus on more of the, the refined side of New England. And let's see here. This sectional, even though I wouldn't have probably chosen this color right off, this space in this room, I could not fit what we brought with us because there's such a small space and the radiators. So I went out specifically looking for a sectional. I found this at a consignment shop in Natick, Mass. And it was $1,400. Now with the loose pillows, it's kind of hard to keep looking neat all the time because we do like to plop on it and it sheds feathers sometimes. But for $1,400, I'm dealing with it. And let's see here. This farm table was in the barn of a house we had in Maine. My parents had it when I was a child as our second getaway home and my father cut the legs down and put wheels on it. I have it here for now, but I'm sure I'll find a different table for this space and I'm still looking for just the right carpet for this room. This painting over the sofa, I picked this up at a consignment store in Portsmouth, Mass many years ago for $99. It was used in a model home that I did for an over 55 community. And I, once again, I just like the colors in it. I don't know anything about it. It is a, an oil painting, but for $99, you can't go wrong. I did have to fix the frame here. Once again, since I, did, I knew it wasn't worth a lot of money, I think you can see it there. The frame was broken and I actually rebuilt it up with some uh, wood putty and then repainted it and antiqued it as much as possible so that it wasn't that severe on the eye when you look at it from a distance. Once again, it was a temporary quick fix, but it works works for us. So that is uh, the consignment finds in here, I believe, and some of my loved items. And of course, some of these jars with seashells that we collect whenever we travel. One other, I guess, here. In the ceiling here, this is where the chandelier was that I did the painting project on that I showed in a previous video on how I painted a brass chandelier to look like wrought iron. I found this light fixture for $100 at a store in Exeter, New Hampshire, and I loved it. Um, I saw a very similar light for $6.99 at one of the uh, stores here locally, so I was very pleased with that purchase. All right, so here in the front hall, I'm still searching for some wallpaper, but uh, oh, here's some of the hydrangea that I saved from a tree out back. This mirror here I used in a model home many years ago. I'm going to paint it out at one point because the red and gold do not work for me right now, but um, for now, you know, it fit the space. And I did find these brass sconces at a, uh, another shop in Essex, Mass. I'm trying to think, I probably paid 20 or 30 for the pair of these and I needed something. And then over here, I have a small collection of mirrors because the light fixture is right where I would have probably hung a big picture or print. So I figured uh, what I would do is just put a grouping. I'll add more there. Once this is all wallpapered, it would be a little bit different. This old mirror was from a family friend uh, given to us. 
It is from, I believe now, the 20s because the backing I took off, I was just curious, and I found an old vaudeville poster that was cut from the 20s that they used as the backing. If I can find a photo, I'll put a little uh, quick shot of it here in the video. And these mirrors are custom mirrors that we used to sell in our store that I had left over. And then my little topiary here with my fairy. Um, not everybody knows this, but I have a little fairy hidden in almost every room in my home. I don't know why. I've been doing that since forever. It's just something I do. So I think I'll just fill in real quick on the staircase. I believe I have a blog post showing I tore up um, a red runner. It was a beautiful wool runner, don't get me wrong, but it just wasn't the style that I wanted to go for here in the home. So it came down and down the hallway here. I ripped that up and I, but um, the carpet is a black runner with Moravian stars. And I selected it partly because I've always liked it when I saw it in other homes and I found a smaller scale size for this runner. But I picked these lights up at a store in, I believe it was Northampton or Hampton, New Hampshire. It's a salvage store. And I had Moravian Star at my other home and I loved them. So I replaced a 1940 ceiling fixture that was in the back and the homeowner had a fixture here that they took with them previously. This mirror all the way to the back, it's not in its permanent home yet and I'm still going to paint it out. But once again, the doorbell box was placed in such a manner that I can't hang anything where I would like it to. So I'm having that moved a little bit higher on the wall or tucked away so it doesn't show. But I'll probably paint this mirror out and put it somewhere in the home or it will stay here but be raised up a little bit. And I paid, I think, $25 for that. All right, so let me take upstairs. There's only a few items up here. Uh, to show you because this is where a lot of the major construction is going to be happening and then we'll be putting up molding all over the house like right here just to give you a background for those who haven't been following me this door we just had put in that was a solid wall at one point that went to an apartment that was in our home it was a single family made into a two family we're now turning it back into a single family. So construction officially starts, uh, I think in a week and a half. So I will be giving you tours of that going on. Like once again, I mentioned downstairs, we're going a master bedroom, bathroom, and a walk-in closet. Uh, let's see here, this mirror I found a couple weeks ago and um, has a lot of really pretty detail. I got this for $21 with the bevel glass. Oops, I think I need to clean that, I see it. And you can see in the background the railings that I painted out here too. The railings um, were a like a red-brown stain with white spindles. So once again, it was already painted out and changed in a way that just wasn't what I was looking for here in the home. If somebody ever wants to change it out, they can do so in the future. And I still need to find a light fixture for here. Oh, and here's a funny thing. This doorbell used to be the doorbell that would let people in the front door. So there used to be two doors down there that you would enter into. One door would come up the stairs and one would go straight ahead. So I, um, I think I'll leave it. I'm not going to show you too much here in what we're right now using as the master bedroom because this is a temporary room for us. It's a very small bedroom. All of them actually small in this house. They're all about, oh gosh, 11 by 12 maybe, but then with the radiators and windows. But this is the only room on the second floor that still has a fireplace. So this sweet little fireplace, I'm still looking for some andirons and a little fireplace screen. It does work, but it shares the flue with the one downstairs, so we've decided we're not gonna use it. Painting is Miss Pierce. A lot of people don't know much about her. I've tried to do some research. This is a reproduction, but this always hung in my childhood home. And when we moved, and when my mother moved, she 
sent her along with us. So she is our adopted relative. Miss Pierce is now part of the family. And over here I have a couple little pretty jars. The one on the left is something that I dug up at in our uh, dump in the back of our yard. And a lot of old homes, if for those don't know, they didn't have uh, dumps for people to go to, so they actually used their backyards. And I have so many things that we dug up, and I love it. And this is just a little perfume jar that was my my grandmother's Hattie's. And it could have been an Avon product or something. I'm not sure, but um, it is a silver silver plated top. So that's the only little finds here. Oh, I have a bunch of these flowers in stock too. At one point, I'll probably put those up for sale. Um, I have red, yellow, whites, pinks, orange. Don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet, but I fell in love with the color of these books. So I will be using those in a vignette somewhere, but I just brought them up here for now because this little space was bare. But I think that's it for now. I'm gonna show you a few things in my office, even though that is still a lot of boxes from our move and a mess, but I'm going to show you a few things that I've picked up at some stores there as well. Let's go into that room. All right, we're here in my office, which right now is really a catch-all room. Um, the room I just showed you at the fireplace, I might be changing that to my office. I'm not sure yet, but um, I have some of my, the, like the first print run of my magazine here up in a frame, which that was so exciting. But what I wanted to show you in this room is just part of my book collection. I love to go out and about and find books in resale stores. Some of these, the couple are like the William Haskell of Gloucester. That's my husband purchased that because that's his, one of his family lines. And the house for Middleton there is, um, has our child, my childhood home that I showed you downstairs. But most of these other books I picked up out and about other than um, the Newport book and Where the Land Meets the Sea, those were given to me by acquaintances that actually wrote them. But I just picked up this one, History Summer Haunt, yesterday for $10. But why I pick these up is one, for research for when I write and inspiration, but almost every one of these books mentions one of my ancestors in it. And I just think that's kind of cool. And in the future, I'm going to be showing some videos of touring and following the footsteps of my ancestors and going to find some of the old homes. I already have some of those videos up on my blog, but we're going to be doing a lot more of that. So follow along if you love old home tours, and I'll try to get some of the background history, but I'll do as, as good as I can. Sometimes we'll just be outside, and I have some videos of inside.